Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, welcome. This is Dr. Jacobs. In this video, I'm going to go over three natural steps that you can take at home to stop relief or to get rid of trigger finger pain or issue naturally. But before I do that, I will go over what is done during surgery, the complication of surgery, and the normal healing cycle and how to get to the root cause of the problem of trigger finger and treat it naturally at home. So before I go over the trigger finger, we need to understand what is the tendon because that's actually where you have most of your issue with the trigger finger. So tendon is actually a fibrous cord that attach muscle to bone. And as you can see here in this image, that is actually the tendon that attach the bone to your muscle all the way going down to your wrist. So to your wrist and your elbow. So those tendons that attach from here all and going attached to your muscle here to the, your bone and attach the tendon from here to your bone. That's what you usually have issue with the trigger finger. By definition, trigger finger is inflammation and fibrotic tissue in a tendon. So you fibrotic or scar tissue, you can see it here in this image, you see that swelling, the redness, that is actually the inflammation, and you start to have a scarring that's uh, around your tendon here, and that's what caused the uh, trigger uh, finger. You start to feel uh, pain, stiffness, locking sensation, or catching when you try to open your finger, just catch before uh, you straighten up or unable to straighten up especially in the morning when you wake up or when you're not moving your hand for a very long time it's basically very stiff so symptoms you start to have nodula and that's actually the scarring and the inflammation there you will have catching in there and unable to straighten your uh, fingers and very common to have more morning stiffness, more locking in the morning than during the day. So what is done during surgery? So basically what they do, they just cut into this area and kind of shaving it, the tissue, and help to bend the tissue. So it's kind of clearing it up. The problem with that, when we understand the normal healing cycle, that any, any cut in the body is actually your body has to heal and part of healing actually causing scar tissue and that could cause issue complication after the surgery so what the complication after the surgery and a lot of surgeons do not discuss this complication with their patient that you're gonna experience pain you're gonna experience inflammation you're gonna experience scarring and that could lead to a failure of the surgery so what we need to do is to understand the normal healing cycle and based on that get to the root cause of the problem to release it uh, naturally so um I'm going to go over normal healing cycle. I'm going to use external paper cut just for visualization, but you can see what, so you can tell what's going on internally. Um, so the first stage of healing is inflammation. Swelling, redness, the blood start to rush to that area. And as you can see here in the trigger finger is swelling, redness, and you start to have inflammation and actually scar tissue. With scar tissue is part of the proliferation stage so you probably strain your your uh, your tendon that actually cause a micro tear there and your body start to have inflammation and scarring in this area sometimes it happens from poor diet poor body mechanic repetitive and strain injury there's a lot of reason could cause the trigger finger but in general it's a scarring it's an inflammation in the tendon that prevent the uh, the overstretching of the tendon to straighten your fingers. So a second stage of healing is a proliferation stage. Uh, that's when your body starts to build the scar tissue. That's a very important stage. We need that scar tissue. When you have a micro tear from injury, if your body does not build the scar tissue, that tear will be permanent. We need the scar tissue. The problem is when you have 
too much of that scar tissue, you start to have those nodules there. And that will prevent the tendon from over stretching, to straightening up. Perfect scenario during the maturation stage, this is the last stage, your body should get rid of the excessive scar tissue, the fascia restriction, the inflammation here. That's a perfect scenario. But if you have a chronic trigger finger and you palpate and you start to feel a knot, it doesn't matter which finger it is because some people could have it here, here, there. It doesn't matter. It's most commonly for the those three fingers that most of people experience, but the same issue, the same process of healing happen for all the fingers. So if you have chronic condition and you start to palpate and you feel a nodule that is uh, the scar tissue that you feel there. So um, we have to address that healing cycle from both end and break that vicious cycle. I'm going to go over some non-effective treatment based on the studies so you don't have to waste your time on it and we'll relate that to the normal healing cycle and at the end we'll go over what the three steps you can do at home to stop, trigger finger, relieve it or prevent the surgery. So non-effective treatment based on the studies and this is from literature review that reviewed over 16,000 study they have found that ice and stem is not going to be effective and when you look at the definition of trigger finger and the uh, symptoms and the healing cycle ice and stem or massage is not going to break the scar tissue here and when you look at the right needle, acupuncture, joint mobilization, stretching, all of these based on the studies you can see here in this graph and this uh, table, stretches and exercises, eight systematic reviews indicating that does not provide long-term pain relief. Acupuncture, uh, trigger point injection, myofascial is so on so forth in this list. So in order to treat the root cause of the problem, and I will leave a link for those studies uh, underneath this video. In order to treat the root cause of the problem, we have to address the inflammation and that is actually the first step of uh, what you should do at home because that's part of the problem you have. We have to break that vicious cycle, decrease the inflammation, and work on breaking the proliferation stage. So first thing, so uh, work on the inflammation. If you have minor inflammation, rest is going to help. But with chronic condition and you start to feel a nodule there and with the clicking, rest is not going to be enough. It's not going to relieve your inflammation. So what I personally do and I give to my patients so they can wear it at night for the um, decreasing the internal inflammation is the magnet heel 2 and the range of this magnet is 2 inches and a half so actually it can penetrate the entire finger area to decrease localized inflammation. As important as using the magnet heel to decrease the localized inflammation, especially with trigger finger, we have to put them on anti-inflammatory diet. There is a lot of food cause internal inflammation that correlated to trigger finger uh, uh, inflammation, and we have to decrease the exposure to those food or eliminate it from the diet. So I put them on anti-inflammatory diet and the magnet heel too for severe inflammation when your pain level from 0 to 10, 7 and above, that's indicative of severe inflammation and we have to be a little bit more aggressive. So I use a Magna Health to anti-inflammatory diet and we have internally to decrease the inflammation by utilizing supplements that decrease the inflammation and repair the tissue damage that happened from the inflammation and the scarring in that area. That for severe inflammation. While we are working on inflammation, we have to address the proliferation stage. One of the main thing is the scarring, and that's by definition, trigger finger is a scarring and inflammation. So as I mentioned to you, if you're going to have surgery, you're going to have cut, there's a chance you're going to build up excessive scar tissue. So the idea is we want to break the scar tissue without causing excessive scar tissue from the treatment. So 
Um, and I will show you another image here for your muscle. When your muscle is nice and smooth and there is no injury to it, it looks nice like this. When you have a tear or micro tear, it's happening randomly, and the scarring is look like a random tissue like this, and it's very obvious with the trigger finger to see the scarring here. So what I personally do is I use the A3 to break superficial scar tissue to release it around the tendon from uh, top to all the way to the rest. And then I use the A5 to really go deep to break the deep scar tissue. So the third step that need to be done simultaneously is releasing the fascia system. As you see here, the fascia restriction. I will go over this briefly here because this is extremely overlooked by a lot of healthcare providers because there is not a very effective treatment to treat the fascia system. And when I explain the system, it makes a lot of sense. We have to address it simultaneously with the scar tissue and, and the inflammation. So when you look at this image, you see that white filament here, that is the fascia system. And when you go by meat next time, you see the white filament here, that is the fascia layers. So we have uh, two major categories of fascia, superficial and, uh, and uh, deep fascia. The superficial fascia layer wrapping the entire body. It's like a Spider-Man suit that wrapping the entire body. And you can see it here, uh, the fascia layer. And we have to make the, sim the, the system more complicated, but don't worry, uh, the treatment is very simple. Um, the, each fascia layer have two to three sub-layers, like the superficial fascia layer, it has two to three sub-layers on the top of each other. The deep layer has four major categories, and each of those categories has two to three sub-layers on the top of each other. So we have the apparatic fascia that wrapping a group of muscles, you have the epimycin wrapping each individual muscle fiber, and you have the premycin wrapping a bundle of muscle fiber and each individual muscle fiber that with a fascia air. That shows you how complex the fascia system. When you have fascia restrictions, it's like you're wearing a t-shirt two to three size too small. So it actually compress on the tissue and prevent the ligament or the tendon from gliding and that's common issue especially when you have a scarring that scarring kind of like glued the fascia layers uh, that's on the top of each other and prevent the the does not give enough room for the tendon to really glide so we have to address that simultaneously so what i personally do is i use the e1 to release superficial and apparatic fascia layer and I also use the A5 to release the fascia layer, the epimycin, premycin and endomycin. So it's extremely important especially when you treat trigger finger that you address those three steps simultaneously. Um, if you decide to pick and choose, I'm going to work only on inflammation and avoid the scar tissue, it's not going to work, or avoiding the fascia restriction, it's not going to work. The problem is encompassing those three major symptoms, uh, system that actually causing the problem. I will leave underneath the video a link for the tools that you can use at home to treat your trigger finger. So if you have any question, leave it in the question section below and I will answer it in the future video. We'll see you soon. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below or go to asterinstitute.com.